These are all different kinds of inclusions in courts. It's so fascinating. It's, everything was so different in there. It's going straight down the middle. Straight down. That's wild. That is fantastic. So cool that there's juice in this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, it's Rob, and I've got a special guest today. This is Sharon. She's one of our gemologists on staff. We're going to be unboxing some seriously cool specimens today. So, very let's get excited. All right. Are you? Oh, this is heavy. Got a clue. Crystal clear with surprises inside. Earth's snow globe where mineral worlds reside. Ooh. All right. Do you want to open yours first? Sure. Oh, oh wow. Heavy. I <laughs> think mine's heavy too. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. That is wild. I'm going to open mine. Ooh, oh, holy. Oh my God. Oh my it's gosh. so big. Look at that. That's huge. Holy <laughs> smokes. Oh my God. And you can see right through it too. That's crazy. That is fantastic. It's spooky looking. <laughs> and then there's a little bag. Another little parcel. Another parcel. Wow. So we've got some serious specimens and some small little parcels here, but this is really cool. So it looks like the theme for today is quartz, but specifically quartz with inclusions and all sorts of inclusions. There's like whole worlds of little things in some of these crystals. This is what got me into gemstones for these inclusions because they tell really? you so much about every gemstone. It can tell you where it grew. It can tell you what the conditions were around it. It's just, it's just so fascinating to me. That's just the sheer variety of potential inclusions that can occur within a single quartz crystal. This huge guy, is a tourmalinated quartz and it's got very long very visible needle-like inclusions of tourmaline on the inside of the crystal which is really cool the crystal itself is like transparent like yeah. completely but it's got such a mess on the inside that in some places it's kind of dark like look at that that looks like something trapped in the corner of my it looks like something burned floor. in there but it's Burn. just mass a mass of needles yeah it's a of, huge mass of, of needles tourmaline. to the point where it, it almost looks like it would be soft and the thing about terminalated quartz is that it grows syngenetically, which means that they both grow together at the same time. Yeah. So there's protogenic gemstone inclusions, which means one of the minerals grows before the other one, mm -hmm. and the other one forms around it. In this case, the tourmaline and the quartz formed at the same time, so they're syngenetic. Okay. So they grew in That's sync. really cool. Like the group. It's gonna be me. These are fantastic because these are in every direction. It's like a little spider web inside of here. And this is a fancy cut too, which is awesome. So the tourmaline on the inside of this, it's the black spiky needles on the inside. And it's a black variety of tourmaline, which is called Shoral. It gets its color from titanium, iron, and manganese. This here is rutilated quartz. Rutile or rutile, some people say rutile, is a form of titanium dioxide. It, it is actually this mineral inside of there and it's very tough and it gets stuck in there so when hydrothermal fluids are passing through the titanium will stay put and that's how it ends oh. up in the quartz and it's it's really interesting it just creates all these wonderful patterns too rutile is also used in a lot of things like makeup and powder and lotions and things like that so it's used in the cosmetic world which i think and is toothpaste. interesting and toothpaste so these parcels are great, and these are things that we sell here, and you can find it in the link below. These are all different kinds of inclusions in quartz, so this is just a great little parcel of different ways that quartz can be included with all the unique little minerals that are inside of them. Whoa, especially the strawberry quartz. You can see it's got like different little things in it, so. Its name, of course, because they look like little strawberry seeds in there, but they're actually little bits of, they can be hematite, they can be lipidolite, they can be piedmonite. It gives us this little mix of colors and sparks and sparkles and everything in there that makes it just really neat. And when you look at it with the loop, it's so fascinating because everything was so different in there. It's this sort of tossed salad of stuff in there. It looks <laughs> like somebody smashed a strawberry and left remnants of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> didn't clean up all the way. Yeah, that's like this. This is strawberry quartz in its roughest form, but that's where oh. it's really full of those inclusions. It's so full, it's opaque. It's like a venturine quartz where it's not actually green. It's just full loaded with inclusions of that color. Exactly. That's really cool. Now look at this one. This one's one of my favorites. That's the helolite inclusions, also called medusa quartz. Why is it called medusa quartz? 
because the little blue guys look like the Medusa jellyfish okay. inside. So there's some little blue. tiny blue inclusions in there. Actually, can I, can I borrow yours? So those little blue flecks in there are actually helilite, and those were discovered in quartz actually here in Arizona in uh, 1980. So it's relatively new oh, discovery. So that's a new find. But it's very rare. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this in person before. I've heard that it's also called Paraiba quartz sometimes because of its like similar color to Paraiba tourmaline, which is one of the most coveted colored gemstones in the world. And those blues get the color from copper, which is a very abundant in that area. Yeah, I was gonna say not surprising considering where it's found. You really need to have a loot. If you're gonna get this parcel, you also, you've gotta have a loop in order to appreciate it as much as you can. And what about these guys here? This is saginitic quartz. <laughs> it's called that basically based on its appearance. It's got a bunch of inclusions sort of radiating and about, and it's influencing the apparent body color of the quartz. So the quartz is translucent. I can see light getting through it, but it's so full of these inclusions that it gives it the appearance of having this like reddish brown body color, which is which is really cool. So those inclusions can be rutile, but they can also be tourmaline and gertite and other things. And they're much more fine and more spread out, whereas in the rutile, a lot of times it can be kind of clumped together. Mm -hmm. And so in this one, they look all individual, but it just, and it just really makes it look like the body color. Look at the size of the pyrite inclusions. Yeah. These guys, they're like huge disks. So pyrite occurs in the cubic crystal system. And so sometimes you'll get little cubes of pyrite on the inside. Sometimes they're a little small to see, which is why it's good to have a 10X loop. These pyrite inclusions, most of them are like flattened little sheets of metal, which I think is really, really cool. I think pyrite inclusions are probably some of my favorite. I love the luster difference, where you've got the luster of the quartz itself and then the metallic of the pyrite. Yeah. I love that contrast in a, in a stone. It's just like oh, glass over metal. It's just beautiful. Yeah, oh my gosh. This coat is so awesome. I would want to show this off. I would put this like in a wire wrap or something like that that can Ooh. really show the shape of it because it's just so unique the way it's cut on the back. Parcels are great. They're like a grab bag of different stones or sometimes they have a theme to them. And actually these parcels are on sale. This parcel in particular is full of just different types of included quartz. Pyrite, tourmaline, rutile, all kinds of stuff. I love this. This is what got me collecting. I love Anything that's included, I love to see it. It just, I feel like there's a story with every one of them. You can check the link in the description down below and check them out for yourself. Are we finished? Mm -hmm. No, we have so many more boxes. Yeah. Ready? Ready. All right. Oh, another clue. A green landscape, but neither moss nor grass. An iron crystal appears trapped in glass. Nice poetry. Ooh. Oh. What do you have? Oh my gosh. This is epidote and quartz. So is this, oh. but it's completely different. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. It's going straight down the middle. Straight down. That's wild. That is fantastic. It's like a little pair of chopsticks in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a little perfect. Oh, and there's like little gas bubbles trapped all along like the side of it. I think oh that's gosh. bubbles. Actually, if you look at it from the bottom, it goes nuts. <gasps> oh my gosh. All the facets. That's fantastic. Check that out. So epidote grows in these sort of column, columnar crystals. Yeah. It's iron that gives it that sort of greenish brown color or flavor. It's like wood. Look, I mean, it looks like wood. It does, it does. And that it, that color is idiochromatic with it. So it's always gonna be that greenish brown to black. Okay, um, gotcha. Idiochromatic means of course that the iron, which gives it its color is part of its chemical makeup. Right, it's so it's always gonna be this color. It's, it's not, not a trace very, element. Variant. So epidote is not usually seen in jewelry. It's, you know, one of those iron minerals. It's not translucent. It doesn't let light pass. So it doesn't, it's not conducive to jewelry, but collectors love it because it's got this wild crystal shape. This is not available for sale right now, but if it does become available, there will be a link in the description. So if you're watching this in the future, check down there if you're interested in this piece. Good. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's got a clue as well. Oh boy. Not quite a mineral, more a compound. Can you spot me in there dancing around? Got my loop ready. What is going on in here? Oh, I have a guess. Oh, and then there's oh. this little guy as well. I should mention that this specimen and this specimen, this big old terminated quartz are both on loan from our friend Darlene at Earth's Core. So check her shop out. She's got obviously loads of cool stuff. Oh, I see what it is. I understand the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> They're indicators it's a map. of movement. Oh my gosh, wait, it's chock full of stuff. 
This is what we would call so, anhydro so cool. quartz. There are little bits of liquid moving up and down inside these cavities inside of this quartz. Ancient water is in this rock. That's so cool. And the way that happens is water will seep down into rocks and deposit minerals and a crystal will begin to form. What happens sometimes is that crystal begins to form, water continues to trickle down, but instead of passing through, it gets trapped in, you know, a little cup, a little mineral cup, and it becomes encased and it cannot escape and it doesn't evaporate like it normally does. The crystal, I guess, grows around it and the water, the liquid is trapped inside. So in this case, there's several different cavities inside this quartz mm -hmm. where the water is just moving around and moving little flakes of other mineral substance around inside of it. And it's just fascinating to see it. And all of the circles drawn on it are indicators for where you can find these air bubbles and liquid pockets shifting around. It's super cool. So I have heard that some gemologists or collectors will actually drink the water that's inside of there. I'm not sure that's exactly safe. It probably is very mineral rich, but not sure how old the water is or how stale the water is. Yeah. I don't think I recommend it. It's an expensive shot, I'll tell you that. I feel like we've utterly neglected this little faceted. Oh, it's not faceted. Wait, it's. Or I can see one? yellow patches, so I think it indicates to me that it's petroleum, liquid petroleum, which I also would not want to it drink. It is. It's so cool that there's juice in this. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of times the petroleum in quartz uh, will fluoresce. So, I think we should take Ooh, a look let's try it. and see. All right, let's give it a, let's give it a zap. <gasps> Whoa, dude. Oh my gosh. I thought, me oh my gosh, that's... It's fluorescing like a bright really turquoise brilliant blue. Lady. And only and only those like three or four yeah. patches also. It's not the whole stone. It is sort of radiating and lighting up the whole stone, but like you can totally tell that it's the distinct petroleum patches. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I should mention while we're <laughs> geeking out over this <laughs> that we do have a couple petroleum quartzes for sale, but emphasis on a few. It's a limited number. So if you want one, hustle. So usually in these shows, we take a break to take a closer look and get some nice close-up shots of a stone of our choosing. I think I'm gonna go with the petroleum in the quartz. Okay, that's a good choice. I'm going to go with the epidote in quartz, this faceted one, because I love the design of it and the symmetry. So let's take a closer look. Well, this has been an awesome episode. Sharon, thank you for joining me at the table today. Thank you for having me, this was fun. Yeah, your unboxing debut. <laughs> I'll remind you that most of the stuff on this table is for sale or will be for sale. So check the links in the description if you're interested in any of this stuff. And which one of these was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.